Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, if we have newcomers today, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Christina. I'm the head of sales at Shopti Pro. Um, and today we're going to talk about our new technology, Digital COVID Pass, and how it can help different verticals like travel, tourism, um, entertainment to get recovered from COVID-19 impact. Um, so in today's webinar, uh, we will have the following talking points. Uh, the impact of COVID-19 on malls, on cinemas, on global travel and tourism. Uh, we will share the organizations that filed uh, for bankruptcy. Uh, we're going to talk about the changing scenarios, uh, the impact of travel restrictions on employment and tourism. Uh, we will review the changes in um, hospitality sector, uh, when uh, will things get normal. Um, we also propose the remedy uh, for reviving travels and businesses worldwide. Uh, we will share the information about different countries and vaccine passport, what are vaccine passport, the issues with uh, such vaccine, vaccine passports and certificates. Uh, we will share who needs this pass. Uh, we're going to talk about the customer experiences, um, about the innovation, about our technology, digital COVID pass, and uh, the differences between the automation and manual verification process and uh, the benefits of the um, Shakti Pro's digital comment pass. Um, at the end, we will have a live Q&A session. So you have a chat box where you can drop messages uh, straight away, or you can just um, drop a message with your question or inquiry uh, once we've done with the uh, webinar today. Uh, so uh, let's start from the uh, statistics. Um, since we're still uh, living in a new normal, our world is moving towards to the contactless technologies, frictionless and safe environment. We also experience the drop of offline shopping and increase of online shopping. Uh, for example, um, Canada's top 10 malls reported 42% drop of food traffic in 2020, which is very sad, of course. And uh, we also see the increase of e-commerce and subscription-based businesses. So people today are spending more and more time and money uh, online. Um, now let's see the picture in a more detailed way based on different um, statistics and in different industries. And one of the major sources of uh, picking up the virus is a human interaction in very close and poorly ventilated spaces like malls, public transport, and so on. So the pandemic forced the closure of malls and shopping centers worldwide. And now it's forecasted that uh, about 25% of malls, specifically in the U.S., will be shutting down in the next five years. Um, now, uh, we also have this um, very sad statistic that 78% uh, of consumers uh, consider online shopping to become more popular post-pandemic. 85% uh, consumers believe that enclosed shop mall shopping will become more or uh, less popular. Um, about 35% Canadians have uh, today an Amazon Prime membership and 65% of Americans also have an Amazon Prime membership and about 50% of overall Amazon users have increased their spending since the start of pandemic. Um, as well as the big brands uh, in retail like Adidas, for example, reported that it could be about 1 billion US dollar um, lost due to the closures in China. And similarly, the Black Friday sale has about 52.1% drop of footfall in stores and malls. And during 2020, we also saw a closure of about 40 major retailers across the US. So the situation is not so uh, very optimistic right now. Uh, now let's also talk about the impact on cinemas. Um, since the 
first wave of COVID, we have experienced very uh, rapid closures of cinemas, theaters, um, the entertainment sector itself. And according to the independent research by Media Group, in 2020, the cinemas worldwide had about 52% um, decrease in ticket sales. And the report of the global box office shows a loss of 5 billion US dollars in the entertainment industry itself and about 2.5 million people lost their jobs. So theaters and cinemas um, are slowly opening up in the US after being allowed a minimal number of audiences, but also um, to save industry worldwide, a uh, solution is required that uh, would basically allow cinemas and uh, theaters operate in a safe and healthy way. Um, we have almost the same sad situation across the global travel and tourism businesses um, owing to the border closures uh, and flight restrictions. Uh, the global tourism and travel industry have been stuck in a lethal blow. And prior to the pandemic, the travel industry has, been, has seen about 59% growth in 2019, raising from uh, 800, 899 million uh, to 1.3 uh, billion US dollars. So more than about 320 million jobs are created by global travel directly, whereas the whole tourism industry contributes about uh, 8.9 trillion US dollars to the global GDP in 2019. But unfortunately, the global travel and tourism sector last year suffered from a massive loss and um, almost about 4.5 uh, trillion uh, US dollars. So not only this, but nearly 10% of global GDP uh, comprises travel and tourism. Uh, many of airlines like Latam, Miami Air International, Norwegian Air, Virgin Australia, and others couldn't cope and went bankrupt. But overall, um, some airlines are still providing their services, which comes with a huge responsibility of ensuring that the passenger has a verified and authentic uh, COVID-19 PCR test report, and they need to make sure they are providing a safe environment to uh, all their clients. Uh, talking about the uh, general statistics provided by the World uh, Tour Tourism Organization, the international arrivals dropped by 75% in 2020, and it's predicted that things will become more or less normal um, within two and a half to four years. But the overall loss of the terms, uh, tourism industry um, within the first 10 months of COVID-19 is about 935 billion US dollars. And the industry has suffered um, 10 times uh, than what it faced uh, in the uh, 2009 economic crisis. And due to travel restrictions, uh, about 100 million jobs are at risk, um, from which about 54% are occupied by women. And this collapse uh, of the travel and tourism industry affects about 10, uh, uh, 109 million people directly. Um, talking about other sides of travel restrictions, many countries across the EU, like Belgium, France, Portugal, Finland, and others, are closed their borders initially, but after tackling the first wave, uh, they did revisit this policy. So uh, today, for example, UK um, propose a fine of £5,000 of traveling abroad uh, without a good reason, whereas we also did see that non-essential travels were discouraged amid the coronavirus. This caused a uh, rapid and uh, a rapid demise of travel industry due to which about 109 million people were affected directly and about 233 million jobs were affected indirectly. And it is seen that uh, the only solution to this problem is the 
availability of vaccine at first. Uh, however, um, this still doesn't have a lasting impact and governments need to think about the alternative and most uh, efficient um, ways and scenarios. Uh, the same as an entertainment and travel industry, the hospitality sector has uh, the same issues. And only in 2019, there was a boom uh, in the industry. It contributed about uh, 59.3 billion pounds in gross value added and the UK's economy, which sums up about to, um, 3% of the UK GDP output. Um, COVID impact on the um, hospitality sector is more than 96% uh, in Europe. Um, and following the pandemic, guest rates um, also dropped massively. For example, it's 96% uh, in Italy, 68% uh, in China, 67% in the UK, 59% in the USA, and about 48% in Singapore. Um, so situations are not improving and according to the report from Alpha, uh, business travel to lag at least about 85% from um, 2019 through April 2021. Um, the sheer drop of travelers and passengers caused by the pandemic had a direct impact on employment trade um, in the industry. So from uh, January uh, to March 2020 and from July to September 2020, the number of jobs in hospitality sector fell by 6% and it's about 147,000. Um, it is expected that uh, the uh, hospitality sector will recover uh, during uh, 2021, but remain nearly uh, 500,000 jobs below the industry's uh, pre-pandemic employment level, about uh, 2.3 million em employees worldwide. Um, so when things get normal, uh, this is a very good question uh, everyone are asking. Uh, according to the report of the uh, um, Economist Intelligence Unit, um, majorly uh, 2022 will rid us completely of the pandemic, but uh, tier three countries and developing countries may suffer more and will recover during the 2023. 20, uh, so we have talked about uh, the impact of COVID-19 on different industries, but um, let's also talk about the uh, remedy itself. So the entire situation calls uh, for a remedy that not only considers the health protocols, but also helps in reviving a major sector of global GDP. Um, so a lot of countries already propose the way forward. For example, in the U.S., the Center of Disease Control and Prevention announced an order requiring all passengers arriving to the U uh, from the U.S. Um, to the U.S. from different countries worldwide uh, to get tested more than. Uh, three days before their uh, flight departs. And for example, the EU Commission um, has proposed a green certificate for regional travelers. The, U the UK proposed a vaccine passport for traveling, uh, conducting business, uh, and for entering pubs, cinemas, and other public places. In, Dermon in Denmark, um, uh, it's uh, a COVID digital COVID app, uh, and a digital pass uh, in order to um, uh, travel and enter public places. Uh, in China, for example, uh, uh, they are considering now a digital vaccine passport. In Kuwait, it's required to have a proof of vaccination. And uh, in Israel, they are also reconsidering a vaccination passport one more time for their citizens because they have a very um, unstable situation with uh, vaccination right now. Uh, so, so what are uh, vaccine passports itself? Um, a vaccine passport, it's a certificate or a passport in a paper or in a digital uh, document format, which approves a fact that the person has been vaccinated against the COVID-19. So European Commission has proposed a um, digital green certificate as a proof uh, that the person is vaccinated um, and has a negative PCR test. Um, 
in the UK, uh, they are proposing um, a vaccine pass that will be, um, you know, uh, that would allow uh, different people to engage in the public activities and travel freely. In the US, um, it's also a process um, of providing a vaccine passport and the White House are looking for uh, free, private and safe uh, vaccine cards or vaccine passports. Uh, but still, despite the fact that the uh, vaccine passports will give us more flexibility, it still brings up an um, issue where uh, we need a manual verification uh, of this pass in airports, in cinemas, in shopping malls, and many other places. So it's obvious that manual verification is time-consuming and uh, human effort is required. So for verifying, for example, PCR test reports, the staff has to extract the information from the QR code on the test and compare it with the identity document, for example, with the passport or with the ID card or with the driver license, which increases the chances of error because we're only humans after all. And even uh, though the test results are synced and protected through a QR code. Um, there are a lot of cases uh, that has been seen uh, of forged, forged QR codes and photoshopped QR codes and vaccine passports that are, are already exist. So verifying home printed and fake uh, COVID test remains a um, challenge. Um, at the moment, we um, see these sectors that uh, really needs a COVID pass uh, to be implemented. It's airports, arenas, conferences and expos, large scale events, um, peer to peer uh, hotels and cinemas. Um, uh, talking about the um, future customer experiences, the pandemic um, now has a very stressful impact uh, and people are in doubt regarding their safety and regarding the spread of a virus. So um, in order to reduce risk from the business standpoint and to reduce stress from the customer point of view, major businesses and industries should implement very fast, automated and contactless technologies. So here Shafti Pro basically steps in and offers a new technology digital COVID pass and uh, vaccine certificate verification services. And uh, we are gonna talk now about uh, the technology itself and I'll explain uh, the differences and the innovation we've, we've made. So uh, uh, we understand that uh, innovation is a remedy. And at the moment we're offering an opportunity to implement a fully automated solution to get rid of manual verification of vaccine passport and COVID-19 PCR test and uh, verification of identity documents like passports, ID cards, and travel licenses. Um, with uh, such op automation, customers can securely enter shopping malls, uh, arenas, airports, uh, cinemas, and um, it is something that can bring up different businesses to uh, a level of um, operation. Um, now basically, why uh, uh, Shafti Pro Digital COVID Pass should be implemented, uh, there are several reasons. Um, so the, first of all, it's a fully automated and AI-based uh, uh, COVID test authentication and, and security clearance. Uh, the identity verification and COVID test authentication are happening in seconds. So for example, the uh, uh, authentication of the identity document, like uh, passport, for example, usually takes uh, uh, about 10 to 20 seconds, and uh, we are comparing the information on the ID document with the um, QR code uh, information on the COVID test within a few seconds. Uh, then basically the technology can detect uh, forging and for photoshopping of the QR code and of the identity document itself. Uh, we can also cross check uh, the uh, information and data presented on the PCR test report uh, through the uh, 100 plus different government authorized laboratories worldwide. 
so we're uh, covering the global vaccine passport and uh, COVID tests uh, verification. Um, at last, we are uh, not uh, requiring the installation, so it's uh, very, very um, uh, simple uh, to use uh, the verification process itself. Um, if we will compare the uh, difference between the manual verification process and the automated verification, uh, we will see that in the manual verification, the human intervention is required. So while uh, Shafti Pro can fully automate the process, um, the manual verification usually is error prone, while we can completely reduce the errors because we're using the uh, AI-based and machine learning uh, technologies in our process. Um, we also see that human intervention is also causing uh, delays in verifications because uh, uh, human eye is not, not so fast as a uh, computer, of course. So Shafti Pro uh, verification has um, uh, happens in seconds. Um, we also see that with manual verification, you cannot guarantee and check um, the authenticity of the PCR test and the identity document, while uh, the Shafti Pro digital COVID pass technology confirms the accuracy of format, and we're cross-checking the data from the uh, government laboratories. And uh, basically, it also helps to um, reduce manual work and automate uh, uh, all the processes. Uh, so the benefits of a digital COVID pass uh, by Shafti Pro are obvious. Um, first of all, it's bringing more safety and can streamline operations. Uh, secondly, it helps uh, the organization in regaining the customer trust. Um, it is also a cost-effective solution. There are no installation required. Uh, required. It helps in increasing the revenue. Uh, we are also verifying the data against the government authorized, authorized lab portals. And so technology reduces the number of cases with forged or photoshopped PCR tests and ID documents. Uh, we also provide flexible technology which can be adjusted to the business needs and the technology itself can also help uh, global travel and tourism and other businesses worldwide to revive their operations. Um, so basically, uh, this is the end of um, the uh, today's webinar, uh, which was focused on our new product digital COVID pass. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can drop me a line uh, to my um, email. Um, this one, Christina at shaftyproducom And now we can start with the questions you already have dropped in, in the chat box. Um, OK, so the first question. Um, is this solution designed specifically uh, for the third wave of COVID or it will be effective even afterwards? Um, thank you, Dan, for your question. Um, I believe that a uh, current solution uh, will be effective during the whole uh, period of time uh, during the COVID uh, and afterwards because um, unfortunately different countries are implementing the vaccination in a various way. So for example, in the UK, in the US, uh, there are about five different vaccines that are available and uh, people can choose uh, which one they would like to use. But for example, in other countries, in uh, uh, tier three countries, uh, people are still waiting for a vaccine. So there, there is no choice uh, and they are just still waiting for at least one, one vaccine to be uh, implemented in their country. Um, so uh, I believe that during even, you know, uh, the period of three years, uh, the um, technology will still be applicable and no one knows how the situation uh, will change during this time. Um, okay, so let's jump to the second question. Uh, can you guide us on the installation process? So uh, 
specifically um, the standard uh, services uh, uh, for identity verification, like uh, verification of ID cards, passports, travel licenses. If you would like to use just this technology, uh, then uh, you can uh, use either um, web portal uh, where you can manually verify and upload the documents um, provided by your customers, or you can integrate our solution through API, uh, SDK for iOS and Android. We have iFrame and we have um, other options, uh, alternative option, for example, a hosted verification page so we can develop a, a web page fully designed uh, based on your branding requirements and uh, the requirements to the KYC flow. Um, if it's the uh, integration or, or the usage of the digital COVID pass. So basically it would be uh, the online portal where, uh, which basically uh, we provide uh, to all our customers. They can simply log in and scan a QR code and scan the identity document and compare uh, automatically the information from the identity document with the information we gather from the QR code um, to understand whether the document itself is authentic and the QR code on the PCR test is authentic. Um, the second question, uh, the next question from Frederick, do you compare the data in the past against country databases? Um, so we are comparing the data. So we're not basically comparing, but we're cross-checking the data from um, QR code, uh, which leads to the uh, laboratory portal. So we are basically cross-checking the data from, as I said, about 150 plus laboratories worldwide. So to make sure that the COVID test is authentic and the data that is uh, on the COVID test, uh, PCR test is um, uh, is corresponding itself with the uh, information that is on the uh, passport, for example, or on the um, ID card. Um, the next question, uh, you mentioned verification from trusted labs. How do you manage that? Will you contact the lab itself for verification? Um, so the QR code basically leads to, um, uh, to the URL of the uh, laboratory. So uh, in each country, there are a few uh, government or private laboratories that are approved by government. So uh, we can basically enter uh, the um, URL and gather the information like uh, first name, last name, um, date of birth, um, with, and cross-check this information, compare this information with the identity documents. So first of all, um, just to make sure that the COVID test belongs to the person, for example, who is trying to enter the airport, for example, we are comparing the data from the QR code um, with the data presented on the passport. Uh, Okay, the next question, how it will help assure authenticity of the labs uh, are real? So, uh, yes, as I said, there are only few laboratories that can, um, uh, that can provide the authentic uh, laboratory test. So, if there is no QR code on the PCR test, it also can, you know, um, it's a question uh, to, uh, to the person because usually all laboratories worldwide provide the QR code as a security check. Um, so it's very hard to forge the link to which uh, um, this QR code leads. So basically uh, we confirm, so if the laboratory named, I don't know, um, for example, um, australianmedicine.com, for example. So that it, it usually it leads to the official website like australianmedicine.com slash uh, and the number of the COVID test, for example. So it's uh, for, 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 you know, the usual, uh, you know, person, it's very hard to forge the, uh, the link. So it's always should be the authentic link. Otherwise, if the link leads to a website of, for example, an authorized laboratory, or it leads to um, um, unknown website, 
basically we will uh, decline the verification itself. So first of all, we need to make sure that the link uh, itself belongs to the laboratory, and then we compare the information from the identity document with the information that is presented on the link, uh, like first name, last name, date of birth, and other parameters. Um, okay, um, let's go uh, to the next question. Okay, so how much of the pass data from the passport is available to staff of airports and how long will airport airline hold the data compared to their passenger data? Um, so uh, basically we are storing uh, the information on our end um, uh, regarding the uh, uh, the verification of the identity document. So uh, we're not storing the information which uh, uh, we gather from the QR code. We're not storing the link, but we're storing personal user's data like the name, surname, password, uh, uh, number, or the issue date, expiry date of the document. So such information is being stored about two years on our servers. Uh, so servers are dedicated, and since we're GDPR compliant, uh, basically there is a way uh, for our customers to automatically delete all this data once the verification is done, or in some cases we also provide on-premise um, on solutions. So it's based on the customer requirements, volumes, and other requirements for the uh, that data privacy and so on. Uh, so the next question, can we expect uh, real-time results of verification from digital COVID pass? Yes, basically you just need to have, uh, um, you know, <laughs> internet connectivity. Uh, so uh, we can cross-check the data from the password and from, from the QR code and get back to you automatically through the back office or uh, through the API if you will um, integrate our service in this way. Um, okay. The next question, uh, does it verify uh, vaccination cards as well? Uh, yes, uh, we do verify uh, vaccine cards, vaccine passport and vaccine certificates as well. Um, okay, the next question. Australia and New Zealand are considering a travel bubble between two countries. Uh, does that not render your pass uh, obsolete? Um, so basically, uh, the um, the COVID pass, uh, the digital COVID pass, could be implemented not only to travel businesses, but for example, uh, to uh, businesses as we talked about an um, entertainment sphere like theaters or cinemas, uh, where basically you still need to have at least in some cases uh, it's required to have a negative PCR test, uh, or in some cases it's um, it should be a um, COVID passport or certificate. Uh, so still, if not uh, in travel business, but in entertainment business, you uh, this technology uh, uh, still could be implemented. Um, okay, the next question. Um, many airlines and companies are launching their own application for COVID tests. Is Shakti Pro Digital COVID Pass any different? Um, yes, of course, uh, different airlines are also trying to automate the process themselves. Um, but it's not, you know, um, very um, common uh, scenario because um, not everyone, uh, you know, businesses uh, worldwide has their own um, development department because uh, for the uh, innovative technologies like this, uh, it should be at least, you know, the uh, about 10 to 20 people uh, from the development team involved because um, the it's kind of technologies like uh, machine learning, uh, AI and uh, the risk management and risk assessment. Uh, plus, uh, if we're talking about the implementation on um, iOS and Android, there should be a specific developers for 
such platforms so uh, of course some um, some businesses and airlines are uh, trying to uh, implement something similar uh, but of course uh, we have our own scenario uh, and of course it's different <laughs> uh, let's let's jump to uh, the next question uh, digital COVID pass. What else can be? Uh, what else can the pass uh, be used besides entering the public? Entering in public. Uh, so, um, actually, um, as I said, so um, not only um, the, uh, uh, for example, the theaters or cinemas, but also, for example, shopping more malls uh, or, for example, some. Uh, private parties or in conferences or uh, big expos or massive uh, events or concerts or for example in music halls or in any other you know entertainment areas or travel areas or hospitality air areas or in restaurants or in retail sphere so there are a lot of different ways how uh, this technology could be implemented um, so uh, I see that this is basically uh, uh, the end of today's questions. Um, so probably if you would like to continue the conversation and to know more about the uh, digital COVID pass technology or to know more about our uh, standard KYC tools for identity verification, for liveness and facial detection, for other services like two-factor authentication, biometric authentication, consent verification, uh, OCR for business, uh, and many others. So you can drop me a line to uh, Christina at shaftipro.com and uh, we can schedule um, a call with you or we can just uh, have an email conversation. So as you like. Um, Thanks everyone for joining today's webinar. I'm wishing you a great day ahead and see you soon in the next webinars. Cheers, bye-bye.